My name is Ruthika Bugunduri, and I'm good at math and history. I listen to music, create short stories, and create instrumentals, which are all different ways I express my creativity and myself. I recently learned about an act called No Child Left Behind. This act supports standard-based education reforms, establishing measurable goals, and standardized testing. But do we want every child to be measured in the same way? Whoever made this act did not have the internet or they would have come across the famous Albert Einstein quote. If you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it's stupid. I was under the same impressions for years. Maybe I'm not so bright, or I come from a country of engineers and doctors, and a place where the rest of professions are only backup options. It all began with an inspirational talk by a principal of my school back in India for the enthusiastic kindergarten parents. In case it's not clear, let me spell this out. It was inspirational for my parents and not for my kindergarten brain. The principal talked about how kids' minds are like sponges and they can absorb any amount of knowledge without any difficulty. There began the feeding to my brain. This is extensive. From languages to math, nothing to be spared, all to be learned before I get to even first grade. Instead of doing math problems, I prefer to go outside and play with my friends. I hated homework and said I would be happy to solve puzzles, doodle, sing songs, and make up funny stories. The parenting conferences were always hilarious and tragic at the same time. To add to my misery, my parents decided to move countries and we moved to the United States. And since I did not know how the studies were like here, I was kind of nervous at start. Well, it was easy at first, the education wise, but later they realized I was far ahead in my classes and ended up being in, in advanced classes. That is when I started realizing maybe the principal who gave the sponge speech was stating straight facts. My mind had indeed absorbed a lot of things and just needed the right nudge in the right direction. This is when things started changing and I realized that their memorization does not work for me. So one part of the problem solved the other part where my creativity being encouraged got lost among the battery of tests I take to this day. Slowly, I started training my mind to follow the rules of math, English and science to ace the test. But as my grades got better, my stories dwindled, my out of box thinking became non-existent. The only way schools have been designed and made for children is to ace tests and be good at core subjects leaving no time for creative pursuits. Classrooms became tiring as teachers only care about not making mistakes and how they present themselves leaving not much scope for creative writing. Science proves that kids lose their creativity as they age because of school systems. All this does take a toll on a kid's creativity. Since we're told what to do and discouraged from thinking ourselves, even our gifted programs are flawed as they're based on only academic excellence. Is being good in math and science only signs of gifted? What about the budding musicians, sports stars, or etc.? Over centuries, it is proven that formal education has never worked for creative minds. We're made into another brick in the wall, a mass-produced product. Many celebrities had succeeded after they had dropped out of school. Think about this. Kids spent 12 years in public school. 12 years, do they come out with any marketable skills or any advantage compared to any other students? Or is their strengths high? No. I will conclude this small slideshow to end this TED talk. Let's look at some celebrities that succeeded after dropping out of high school or college. Daniel Radcliffe's busy acting career kept him from graduating. Jay-Z bounced around uh, high schools in Brooklyn and New Jersey before eventually dropping out. He's currently the fifth wealthiest celebrity in America with a net worth of 900 million. Brianna was just 16 when she signed a record deal with Def Jam and left school. Since then, she has dropped countless hits built a fashion and beauty empire with her Fendi lines. She's also reportedly launching a luxurious fashion house. Depp dropped, Johnny Depp dropped out of school when he was 15 to pursue a career as a rock star. Apparently acting was his fallback plan. So what was the common reason why all these successful people 
drop out of high school? Well, the answer is right there. This is because the education system does not help them pursue their dreams and interests, which support creativity and outside the box thinking. Thank you for listening.